I'm back in my home country to explore one of Italy's best kept secrets. This is stunning Adriatic coast. I'm embarking on an epic 700 mile journey of this lesser known east coast of Italy. Wow! Now this is a view. From magical Venice in the north, through majestic mountain ranges, and historic hilltop towns. I'm wondering when I'm gonna have a tea break. Spectacular coastal roads revealing crystal clear waters. Tranquil and unspoiled, there is so much to explore. Inspired by my travels, I'll be cooking delicious dishes. Look at that. To share with some of the people I meet along the way. Yeah, yeah. Spectacular. It's very delicious. <laughs> no. Before finally reaching the hill of the boat and the very end of the Roman Empire. It's just awesome. Awesome. My adventure along Italy's east coast starts here, in Venice. The jewel in the Adriatic's crown. And the only way to arrive is by boat. A real James Bond moment as you cross the lagoon, the city rises before you. I've seen many, many cities in my life, but you're gonna have to admit, Venezia, has to be the most beautiful city ever. Look at that. From here, I'll be driving the entire length of the Adriatic right to the hill of Italy's boot. Venice itself actually floats off the coasts. It's an archipelago city made up of 118 interconnecting islands. Every corner you turn here is like being on a film set. But if you really want to enjoy this medieval city, the best way to do it is to go on water in one of the 400 gondolas, which is the very symbol of Venice. Gondoliers have been taking people around the city for more than a thousand years on its network of 177 canals. Ricardo? Gino. Buongiorno. 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 Oh! What a beautiful gondola you have. I'll sit here because this, this looks very calm. The royal sofa. Ah, oh, <laughs> look at that. Ricardo is fifth generation gondolier and one of the youngest in the city. My tour of Venice begins on the Grand Canal. It carves a S-shaped path through the heart of the city and all the other waterways lead from it. Why I always see all the gondolier with the stripy shirt? Why, why is that? Because uh, Venice has been conquered by the French Empire when okay. Napoleon was alive. This is uh, really similar to the Breton uh, striped shirt, the French one. Okay. Where are we now? Now we are in the center of the city. The Rialto Bridge has been uh, the only bridge across the Grand Canal for centuries. From Rialto, the Grand Canal meanders down to the San Marco district. It's getting busy with tourists. Has any tourist ever fall in as you were driving? More than you can imagine. No, really? When they were trying uh, to get out. Idiots. Just like London cab drivers, gondoliers take a series of tests to show that they can navigate the complex network of canals and manage the dramatic tides. When you look at you guys doing it, it looks very easy. It's like driving a car. I want to try later. Are you sure? Yeah? You have a life jacket? What, do you think I'm gonna win the water? You will fall in the water. <laughs> no way. The first day, I've fallen like 20 times. No, I'm not doing it then. We pass under the infamous Bridge of Sighs. It's said that as prisoners were led over it to jail, they sighed on their final sight of stunning Venice. 
As lunchtime approaches, we leave the busy tourist area for the university district of Dorso Duro. This is the locals' Venice. That one there? That one. I love places like this. You know, when I see places like this, I know I'm gonna get good food. Ricardo's taking me to sample the traditional lunchtime meal of gondoliers, cicchetti, which he means small plates. They are Venice's answer to tapas. Look at that, the selection is incredible. Some weird one, I have to say. This is eggs, truffle, and mushroom. Look at that. See, what people don't understand about cicchetti is that it's a very simple concept. It's a nibble, nothing more than that. As you can see, you got the bread, and you can put whatever you want on top. That is the traditional cicchetti. Uh, due, va due per ciascuno. Due per ciascuno. Due di baccalà e due di gamberetti. Perfetto. Che questo è una tartar di tonno con cacao amaro. I've just asked this beautiful lady which one is uh, uh, a traditional one to have. She said baccalà, which is dried fish. Try the one with the little shrimps, and one with tuna and cocoa powder. I mean, tuna and cocoa powder. Now, this is interesting. You like tuna? I love tuna. <laughs> this is like um, a savory cappuccino. More or less, yes. Ah, that's all right. Salty cappuccino. Mm. It's more like a, a savory tiramisu. That's a good contrast. Mm. Yum. As well as plenty of cicchetti bars, this district is also home to the city's oldest boatyard, where gondola are serviced as they have been for over 500 years. With Ricardo now off shift, I'm going to see if I can impress him and his father with my version of cicchetti. One prone with lemon and chili mayonnaise, one with induja honey and parma ham, and a simple tomato basil bruschetta. So where do we start? Is right here with the bread. You can use pretty much whatever bread you want. For my take on this simple lunch classic, Start by slicing the bread, rubbing both sides with olive oil and placing on a hot griddle pan to toast. Now let me show you how to make the tomato topping. Quite easy. Any tomatoes will work for the bruschetta. Big chunks as well. Whenever you chop tomato, don't chop them too finely because otherwise all the pulp and the juice is going to be out. Now, in the tomato, I'm going to put some basil. No need to chop it because when it's fresh and beautiful like this, if you start it to chop, it becomes black. I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt, extra virgin olive oil. That's it. Just make sure you mix everything together. I'm gonna show you now how Italian people make the original garlic bread. When my mother used to do it, she used to get warm toasted bread, then a clove of garlic, which are just peeled, right? And the only thing that you have to do just gently rub the garlic, and the job is done. Perfect. Next, for the prawn cicchetti, add olive oil, a touch of salt, and a squeeze of lemon to raw prawns. OK, so now the prawns are marinating. Let me show you what I do with the mayonnaise. And how you're going to jazz it up is very simple. In there, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice. Make sure the pips they don't go in there. And then I'm going to give a nice kick with chili powder. I'm not going to tell you how much to pour. Start with one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoon, and then is however hot you like it. Now, let's cook the prawns. Hot griddle pan again. This will take no more than three minutes on each side. Yeah, don't overcook them, otherwise they become all rubbery. I'll guarantee you Ricardo will love my cicchetti. Now, the other one I'm going to prepare is cicchetti with nduja and parmaham. Let me talk to you about nduja. This is nduja. It's nothing more than lots of different dried chili with pork. Quite spicy, so be careful not to overdo it. Look, and the good thing is that this is spreadable as well. And just put it on top of two of them. Other things you can use in Dusha, for example, if you're making a fantastic risotto. Couple of teaspoons on Dusha, fantastico. Most UK supermarkets stock in Dusha, or a soft chorizo will do the job. Add parma ham to the Dusha, spread chili mayo ready for the prawns, 
and build your tomato bruschetta. Drizzle the ham with the runny honey. So you can imagine now, you get the spicy dusha with the sweet honey, the parma ham, yum. A little bit of pistachio nuts just on top, and the prawns, oh yes. Now straight on top of our beautiful chicchetti. Look at that, come on. Huh? What do you think about that? My Venetian chicchetti. Ricardo is gonna love this. I hope you're hungry, you two. Oh, is this for us? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, look at that. Mm. What do you think? This is my chicchetti. Good? Very strong. Yeah, it's a nice, <laughs> strong flavor. Yeah. With the wine. I know, we need <laughs> this. Alessa, vieni qua, vieni. And Alessa from the Cicchetti restaurant is on hand with some Prosecco. Gino, long life. Oh, to you and long life to you too, guys. Thank you. I'm on a grand tour of the Adriatic coast, starting here in Venice. As the city wakes, the gondoliers prepare for their day and the Grand Canal bursts into life. And it's the perfect time for me to visit a special place in the very heart of the ancient city. Food shopping in Italy is a daily activity. I'm here in the Rialto market and these people have been selling fresh produce to the Venetians for over seven centuries. Its central location means Rialto has always been the commercial hub of the city and still has the very best of Italian seasonal food on offer. Now, let me give you a tip if you want to come to the Rialto market. You're going to have to get up early. As soon after dawn, get yourself here because this place very soon is going to be mobbed. You really can find anything here, but it's the seafood, fresh from this morning's Adriatic catch, that I'm after. Oh, look at that, fresh crab. How beautiful are they? Now, I know exactly how to deal with these bad boys. You are at home, let me give you a tip. Uh, get friendly with the fishmonger and get him to do all the hard work. Ah, uh, grazie. I've got a lovely recipe that I'm gonna show you with fresh crab. Grazie. Being out this early is also the best time for me to enjoy Venice's labyrinth of narrow streets on foot and to see the iconic San Marco Square before it's flooded with 60,000 daily visitors. Framed by the Basilica San Marco, the Doge's Palace and the Bridge of Sides, the Gothic architecture of this vast square has been inspiring the imagination of artists for centuries. Sybil, make sure the hair, the hair are nice and the chest. Make a nice chest there. Oh, that's spot on. Look at that. Very nice. I'm taking a short trip away from the crowds to an island which is home to a different kind of artist. Tiny Burano lies seven miles northeast of Venice. An ancient fishing village is world famous for its lakes. Almost 3,000 permanent residents live and work on this bustling island. It's considered one of the most colorful places on Earth. And the first thing that strikes me as I approach are the dazzling colors of his fishermen's cottages. Lorenzo! Hello, ciao Giro! Buongiorno, welcome to Burano. Local interior designer Lorenzo has lived here all his life. His family came here in the 1800s. There is one thing I don't understand. What's with all these colors? in the houses. Why so many colors? Uh, look, in the, in the past we have a lot of fog, you know? So the fishermen uh, paint uh, uh, strong colors to recognize their home. Otherwise they wouldn't know where to go. Oh, is, it, is, it, is it a legend <laughs> or is it actually true? No, 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 that's, that's true. That... What about the wives? Would they paint their wives as well? Just, oh, what about if you don't recognize the wife in the mist? <laughs> well, well, that's a good idea. Let, See? let me think yeah, about yeah, that. I got, I got a plan, I got a plan. 
in the summer, I get it. The tourists, a lot of people around. But what do you do here in the winter? Ah, uh, we paint. Okay. <laughs> one. We fish. Okay, other two. Kind of fish. We do lace. 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 Okay. For 12 centuries, the lace was made here. It's the finest in the world. You need to show me. Lorenzo's family have had their lace workshop here for 200 years. Beautiful. This intricate skill has been passed down for five generations. Their handiwork is so detailed that it can fetch thousands of euros and is sought after by Europe's royalty and Hollywood stars. Carmen. Carmen. You're always surrounded by beautiful women. How do you do that? So, Carmen e Mirella. Mirella, perfetto. Quanti anni ci vogliono per imparare? Io ero da bambina, avevo otto anni che lavoravo con la mamma, la nonna. So, this lady started to do lacing when she was only eight years old. And I'm not going to ask how old she is now, but I'm sure she must be over 40, right? So, uh, that's a hell of a lot of years. What's the most complicated piece of art you, you made? We made uh, eight meters of tablecloth in two years and a half. You know, I'm going to tell you a secret that Please. not many people know. When I used to be a little boy, I used to make... Uh, you remember Ken, the doll? Yeah. Barbie's yeah. husband? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ken, yes. yeah, Ken, yeah. Yeah, Ken, yeah. I used to make his clothes. No. Yeah, yeah, but don't... don't, don't, don't I don't want too many people to no, know no. stuff like that. So important. I wanted to play very, very cool here. Yeah. Why don't you try? Yeah, but what about if I'm going to mess the butterfly up? Ah, we do. You know, no problem. See? Yeah, she can do it. You tell her. Yes. I don't want... Mirella, scusa. Prego. Facciamo provare, eh? Sì. Prego. Eccola. Okay. Vado? Please. Eh... Here? Yeah. Good. Under the metal? Yes. Perfect. See? That's good. Not bad, eh? No bad, good. Sing, <laughs> sing, canta, canta. Mirella, 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 sei fatta per fare l'amore. Al cinema ti porto con me. Mirella, Mirella, Mirella. Ecco, questa è la canzone. Bella. Bella. I'm leaving the lace making to the experts and returning to Venice and something I'm more comfortable with. Now, if somebody asked me, what would be your dream place to cook? Well, the answer is very simple. Right here, right now. I mean, look at the view behind me. You can't get any more Venice than this. This region is the home of Prosecco, so I'll be using it along with the crab I bought at Rialto this morning to create a mouth-watering linguine dish. You cannot come to Venice without opening a bottle of Prosecco. And this is a bottle from Terre di San Venanzio, and it's um, a Cartese Brut. A Brut is uh, a, the driest you can get as far as Prosecco is concerned. There you go. Let me taste. Beautiful. Citrusy. This is going to go really well with the sweetness of the crab and the lemon. OK, now, for the sauce, garlic. I don't know if you can hear, I go gondolier in the back singing volare. Cantare. Oh, 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 oh. Pour the sliced garlic into a cold pan, add olive oil and finally chopped chili. Only then put on the heat. As soon as you can see the garlic and the chili sizzling, time to put the rest of the ingredients. Now, the other ingredients I'm going to use, cherry tomato. I just cut them into quarters and then I got pitted green olives. Roughly chop the olives and a large bunch of flat leaf parsley. Now, look at that. Garlic sizzling, the chili is sizzling. Add the cherry tomatoes, olives and parsley to the pan. And come on, look at the colors. Once you've done that, I'm going to pour my crab mix. Just make sure you flick it on top, like this. Little touch of salt, 
No need for pepper because we got the chili already there. Oh, come on, guys, look at that. Great in the zest of a lemon. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to switch off the heat because the last thing you want to do is to overcook the crab, overcook the tomatoes, overcook the olives, keep it fresh. At this point, is the time to cook pasta. And what I'm using is this linguine that goes in there. Use plenty of water when cooking pasta and at least a tablespoon of salt. Obviously, for this recipe, if you don't want to use crab, you just want to keep it with olives, cherry tomato, garlic, it's absolutely fine. When the pasta is almost cooked, pour the crab sauce back onto the heat. Now, the last thing you have to do to the sauce is to add a touch of Prosecco. Yes, you can use white wine, but what's the point of being in Venice and not using Prosecco? Come on, check the pasta. Now, let me tell you a secret how to cook the perfect al dente pasta. Whatever it says, timing on the packet of pasta, just take one minute away. And that's how you get oh, the perfect al dente pasta. Now, to make sure that your pasta tastes always amazing, add the pasta into the sauce. Just pick it up and straight in the frying pan. You want to make sure that each strand of pasta is coated by the flavor of the sauce. Come on, look at that. Just plate it up. And make sure you get all the olives. Oh. Now, the last thing I would do just before you serve it is a little touch of lemon zest on top. Because in Italy, we never use Parmesan cheese with seafood pasta. And that's the way you make linguine with crab, green olives, cherry tomato, and prosecco. See, this is just the perfect way to end my day in Venezia. Salute!